Hello and welcome back to Bookish and welcome to a new series of videos I hope to do which I'm going to call Where Not to Start With and then the name of an author. Uh, I got the idea to do this video by watching uh, Claudia's uh, channel, uh, Spencer's Library, and in one of her more recent videos she reminded me that she'd done a series of video videos on uh, where to start with, where to start with Jane Austen, where to start with Oscar Wilde, uh, where to start with Ian Forster, uh, and those are really good videos and that's a really good uh, idea. And so I want to do something like that, in part because with the very few authors who I feel like I've read widely enough to make recommendations, uh, people ask me uh, from time to time for recommendations for Hemingway, for Faulkner, uh, for Balzac. I get those questions, so I'm going to do videos about them uh, as well. But I thought I would start off today by doing uh, a video about Gabriel Garcia Marquez, and maybe it's just because of my... I don't know, perverse way of looking at the world or whatever, but to me, I think it's almost important to know uh, where not to start reading an author as it is to know where to start reading uh, an author's work. So this could be related to, you know, the diff relative difficulty of some of their work, uh, how problematic some of their work is, and then a variance in quality uh, of some of their work. So for me, uh, what I would what I would hope for writers who I've read and have some appreciation for and whose work that I like well enough to talk about somewhat frequently on my channel is to make sure that people get off to the right start uh, with that author, that they don't pick the wrong book. And I think Gabriel Garcia Marquez is one of those authors who you can definitely get off to a bad start with. And so I thought I would make him the subject of my first, you know, where not to start with video uh, by talking about books which I think Unfortunately, uh, pop culture maybe uh, directs people towards uh, in terms of reading Gabriel Garcia Marquez for the first time and try to warn you off those books, not necessarily permanently, but at least as your starting point, and then uh, really quickly mention other places to start. So the first place I would not recommend that you start with Gabriel Garcia Marquez's work is with Love in the Time of Cholera. It is possible that this is his most popular uh, most well-known book because of pop culture references and also because unlike uh, his other work this was uh, made into a movie uh, and it shows up oftentimes on lists of some of the greatest love stories or things like that and I think if you go into this book thinking that it's a great love story as the name itself implies then you will end up being disappointed uh, by the book so the first thing you need to know about the book is that, that in my opinion, the book isn't about love, it's about obsession. Uh, it's about obsession to an unhealthy, un, unwise point. And if anything, uh, in terms of love, it's not necessarily a romantic love that the book is really about, but grace or compassion uh, in the end. I know a lot of people uh, struggle with love in the time of cholera because it doesn't seem to be a book in which the main two main characters or at least the, the main uh, male character is actually in love with the main female character, but almost just kind of obsessed with her, and that that obsession leads him into all kinds of terrible things. In addition to that, there is some stuff that, that by today's standards appears even more problematic than it did in the 1980s. I talk to people about this all the time, I think, and you have no idea how different uh, the world is and what we view as problematic or not problematic just from, uh, let's say, the mid-1980s when this book was published uh, till today. And I'm not saying it was better in the past. I'm not saying that at all. In fact, I'm kind of saying the opposite. Like, how did we think this was... Um, uh, okay, but one of the things in this book that's most disturbing, I'm just going to go ahead and tell you, is that there is the sexual abuse of a young uh, girl in the form of her being groomed uh, by an older man, an old man, and then used uh, for his sexual fulfillment with no real regard to what happens to her or her life. Uh, and this is not something that is particularly uncommon in Gabriel Garcia Marquez's work, even though I think in this instance, it's far more disturbing than it is in some other places. But this book, if I think for modern readers with modern sensibility, this book can be one of those books which really gives you uh, a negative impression of Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I think if you read other of his books and then you read this book, it might feel more in context. I'm not saying you'd ever be comfortable uh, with the thing I just described, nor am I saying Garcia Marquez wants you to be comfortable with it. I think it's clearly portrayed as a negative in the book, but it is so stark and so kind of horrendous that 
uh, I think it can it can really throw you off. But again, this is why I wouldn't start with Love in the Time of Cholera. By the way, there's a movie called Serendipity in which this book plays kind of a key role. And I think that's another reason maybe uh, why it seems to be a popular first choice. So the other place I would not start with Gabriel Garcia Marquez is with this book, The General and His Labyrinth. So the only reason why I think anybody, uh, particularly young people today, might know anything about this book is that this book features in a John Green novel. Uh, in John Green's first novel, I believe, called Looking for Alaska, it's the one John Green novel I've read. The main character is obsessed with this novel, reads it over and over again, carries it around, and I think that has probably led some people to Gabriel Garcia, some young readers to Gabriel Garcia Marquez's work, and they picked up the, this book and gone, you know, this is terrible, this is awful, what the hell is this about? And fair enough, this is not. Uh, one of Gabriel Garcia Marquez's best books. And what it really is, is kind of a historical fiction, uh, retracing, fictionalizing the journey of Simón Bolívar, the great liberator of South America from Spanish rule uh, after he was deposed, uh, and his, then his journey uh, across Colombia, uh, and then eventually aboard ship uh, to Europe. And it's surreal, and it's weird, and it's repetitive, and it's symbol heavy and symbol laden. And the reason I think John Green has the main character in his uh, novel, Looking for Alaska, use it is that in a sense, it's like a maze. Uh, it is uh, kind of a repeating thing where wrong directions are taken and dead ends are reached and so on, both internally and externally for the main character. I, I think that's probably why uh, he has Alaska choose this as their favorite book. But to me, this would be a terrible place to start with Gabriel Garcia Marquez. There are two other novels I'm just going to mention, which I also don't think are the best place to start with Gabriel Garcia Marquez. But I don't think anybody's heard about these books for decades. So I'm just going to say The Autumn of the Patriarch, also not where I would start. Uh, because I think this is, of all the Marquez I've read, this is by far the worst. And then... In Evil Hour, which I don't think is bad, but is not really the place I would start. So then obviously, having told you where not to start with Marquez, I probably need to go ahead and tell you where to start. I think that's just the natural flip side uh, of uh, these kind of where not to start or where to start. You also then uh, say where, where not to. So the best place to start with Gabriel Garcia Marquez is with his greatest book, uh, Masterful, I think world classic, 100 Years of Solitude, will... Uh, it is not the easiest book to understand, but I think it gives you a great idea of what Marquez was capable of and what his best writing was like, and it is a masterpiece. Uh, but it is kind of long, I think, in my little crappy uh, trade paper uh, or mass market paperback. It's around almost 400 pages. If you're looking for someplace less intimidating, you can start with A Chronicle of a Death Foretold. This is kind of a novella length book, around 150 pages, uh, which I think is a good introduction to Marquez. Uh, if you just want to be able to say you've read Gabriel Garcia Marquez or just get a taste of what his writing might be like, I think this is a good start. And then also, and this will be probably a theme in these videos that I make, you could also start with uh, uh, Marquez's short stories. I would recommend starting with his early short stories. This, this volume of collected stories contains, I think, his first three short story collections. Uh, one's called uh, Eyes of a Blue Dog. One is called, ooh, what's the other one? One is called Big Mama's Funeral, and the third is called The Incredible Sad Tale of Innocent Erendira and Her Heartless Grandmother. Uh, any one of those three volumes would probably would be okay, uh, but that also is a good place to start. Anyway, there you go. If you're thinking of looking at reading Gabriel Garcia Marquez, I hope you find this video helpful, at the very least, and in telling you what to places to avoid starting. Look forward to your comments in the comment section below, and as always, thank you for watching.